Section 3 of The Promulgation of Universal Peace, Volume 1. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Abu Jalal. The Promulgation of Universal Peace, Volume 1 by Abdul Baha Abbas. Section 2. 5. April 14th, 1912, at 5th Avenue and 10th Street, New York, Church of the Ascension. Notes by Ahmed Sohrab and Howard McNutt. In his scriptural lesson this morning, the revered doctor read a verse from the epistle of St. Paul to the Corinthians. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. The light of truth has heretofore been seen dimly through variegated glasses, but now the splendors of divinity shall be visible through the translucent mirrors of pure hearts and spirits. The light of truth is the divine teaching, heavenly instruction, merciful principles, and spiritual civilization. Since my arrival in this country, I find that material civilization has progressed greatly, that commerce has attained the utmost degree of expansion, arts, agriculture and all details of material civilization have reached the highest stage of perfection but spiritual civilization has been left behind material civilization is like unto the lamp while spiritual civilization is the light in that lamp if the material and spiritual civilization become united, then we will have the light and the lamp together, and the outcome will be perfect. For material civilization is like unto a beautiful body, and spiritual civilization is like unto the spirit of life. If that wondrous spirit of life enters this beautiful body the body will become a channel for the distribution and development of the perfections of humanity his holiness jesus christ came to teach the people of the world this heavenly civilization and not material civilization he breathed the breath of the holy spirit into the body of the world and established an illumined civilization among the principles of divine civilization he came to proclaim is the most great peace of mankind among his principles of spiritual civilization is the oneness of the kingdom of humanity among the principles of heavenly civilization he brought is the virtue of the human world among the principles of celestial civilization he announced is the improvement and betterment of human morals today the world of humanity is in need of international unity and conciliation to establish these great fundamental principles, a propelling power is needed. It is self-evident that unity of the human world and the most great peace cannot be accomplished through material means. They cannot be established through political power, for the political interests of nations are various and the policies of peoples are divergent and conflicting. They cannot be founded through racial or patriotic power, for these are human powers, selfish and weak. 
the very nature of racial differences and patriotic prejudices prevents the realization of this unity and agreement therefore it is evidenced that the promotion of the oneness of the kingdom of humanity which is the essence of the teachings of all the manifestations of god is impossible except through the divine power and breaths of the holy spirit other powers are too weak and are incapable of accomplishing this for man two wings are necessary one wing is the physical power and material civilization the other is the spiritual power and divine civilization with one wing only flight is impossible two wings are essential therefore no matter how much material civilization advances it cannot attain to perfection except through uplift of the spiritual civilization all the prophets have come to promote divine bestowals to found the spiritual civilization and teach the principles of morality therefore we must strive with all our powers so that spiritual influences may gain the victory for material forces have attacked mankind the world of humanity is submerged in a sea of materialism the rays of the sun of reality are seen but dimly and darkly through opaque glasses the penetrative power of the divine bounty is not fully manifest in persia among the various religions and sects there were intense differences his holiness baha'u'llah appeared in that country and founded the spiritual civilization he established affiliation among the various peoples promoted the oneness of the human world and unfurled the banner of the most great peace he wrote special epistles covering these facts to all the kings and rulers of nations sixty years ago he conveyed his message to the leaders of the political world and to high dignitaries of the spiritual world therefore spiritual civilization is progressing in the orient and oneness of humanity and peace among the nations is being accomplished step by step now i find a strong movement for universal peace emanating from america it is my hope that this standard of the oneness of the world of humanity may be upraised with the utmost solidity so that the orient and occident may become perfectly reconciled attain complete inner communication the hearts of the east and west become united and attracted real union become unveiled the light of guidance shine divine effulgences be seen day by day so that the world of humanity may find complete tranquillity the eternal happiness of man become evident and the hearts of the people of the world be as mirrors in which the rays of the sun of reality may be reflected consequently it is my request that you should strive so that the light of reality may shine and the everlasting felicity of the world of man become apparent i will pray for you so you may attain this everlasting happiness when i arrived in this city i was made very happy for i perceived that the people here have capacity for divine bestowals and have worthiness for the civilization of heaven i pray that you may attain to all merciful bounties prayer o almighty o god o thou compassionate one 
this servant of thine has hastened to the regions of the west from the uttermost parts of the east that perchance these nostrils may be perfumed by the fragrances of thy bestowals that the breeze of the rose garden of guidance may blow over these cities that the people may attain to the capacity of receiving thy favors that the hearts may be rejoiced through thy glad tidings that the eyes may behold the light of reality that the ears may hearken to the call of the kingdom o almighty illumine the hearts o kind god make the souls the envy of the rose garden and the meadow o incomparable beloved waft the fragrance of thy bounty radiate the lights of compassion so that the hearts may be cleansed and purified and that they may take a share and portion from thy confirmations verily this congregation is seeking thy path searching for thy mystery beholding thy face and desiring to be characterized with thine attributes o almighty confer thou infinite bounties bestow thy inexhaustible treasury so that these impotent ones may become powerful verily thou art the kind thou art the generous thou art the omniscient the omnipotent six april fourteenth nineteen twelve at carnegie lyceum west fifty seventh street new york union meeting of advanced thought centers notes by mountfort mills and howard mcnutt i have come from distant lands to visit the meetings and assemblies of this country in every meeting i find people gathered loving each other therefore i am greatly pleased the bond of union is evidenced in this assembly today where the power of god has brought together in faith agreement and concord those who are engaged in furthering the development of the human world it is my hope that all mankind may become similarly united in the bond and agreement of love unity is the expression of the loving power of god and reflects the reality of divinity it is resplendent in this day through the bestowals of light upon humanity throughout the universe the divine power is effulgent in endless images and pictures the world of creation the world of humanity may be likened to the earth itself and the divine power to the sun this sun has shone upon all mankind in the endless variety of its reflections the divine will is manifested consider how all are recipients of the bounty of the same sun at most the difference between them is that of degree for the effulgence is one effulgence the one light emanating from the sun this will express the oneness of the world of humanity the body politic or the social unity of the human world may be likened to an ocean and each member each individual a wave upon that same ocean the light of the sun becomes apparent in each object according to the capacity of that object the difference is simply one of degree and receptivity the stone would be a recipient only to a limited extent another created thing might be as a mirror wherein the sun is fully reflected but the same light shines upon both 
the most important thing is to polish the mirrors of hearts in order that they may become illumined and receptive of the divine light one heart may possess the capacity of the polished mirror another be covered and obscured by the dust and dross of this world although the same sun is shining upon both in the mirror which is polished pure and sanctified you may behold the sun in all its fullness glory and power revealing its majesty and effulgence but in the mirror which is rusted and obscured there is no capacity for reflection although so far as the sun itself is concerned it is shining thereon and is neither lessened nor deprived therefore our duty lies in seeking to polish the mirrors of our hearts in order that we shall become reflectors of that light and recipients of the divine bounties which may be fully revealed through them this means the oneness of the world of humanity that is to say when the human body politic reaches a state of absolute unity the effulgence of the eternal sun will make its fullest light and heat manifest therefore we must not make distinctions between individual members of the human family we must not consider any soul as barren or deprived our duty lies in educating souls so that the sun of the bestowals of god shall become resplendent in them and this is possible through the power of the oneness of humanity the more love is expressed among mankind and the stronger the power of unity the greater will be this reflection and revelation for the greatest bestowal of god is love love is the source of all the bestowals of god until love takes possession of the heart no other divine bounty can be revealed in it all the prophets have striven to make love manifest in the hearts of men his holiness jesus christ sought to create this love in the hearts he suffered all difficulties and ordeals that perchance the human heart might become the fountain source of love therefore we must strive with all our heart and soul that this love may take possession of us so that all humanity whether it be in the east or in the west may be connected through the bond of this divine affection for we are all the waves of one sea we have come into being through the same bestowal and are recipients from the same center the lights of earth are all acceptable but the center of effulgence is the sun and we must direct our gaze to the sun god is the supreme center the more we turn toward this center of light the greater will be our capacity in the orient there were great differences among races and peoples they hated each other and there was no association among them various and divergent sects were hostile irreconcilable the different races were in constant war and conflict about sixty years ago baha'u'llah appeared upon the eastern horizon he caused love and unity to become manifest among these antagonistic peoples he united them with the bond of love their former hatred and animosity passed away love and unity reigned instead it was a dark world it became radiant 
a new springtime appeared through him for the sun of truth had risen again in the fields and meadows of human hearts variegated flowers of inner significance were blooming and the good fruits of the kingdom of god became manifest i have come here with this mission that through your endeavors through your heavenly morals through your devoted efforts a perfect bond of unity and love may be established between the east and the west so that the bestowals of god may descend upon all and that all may be seen to be the parts of the same tree the great tree of the human family for mankind may be likened to the branches leaves blossoms and fruit of that tree the favors of god are unending limitless infinite bounties have encompassed the world we must emulate the bounties of god and just as each one of them the bounty of life for instance surrounds and encompasses all so likewise must we be connected and blended together until each part shall become the expression of the whole consider we plant a seed a complete and perfect tree appears from it and from each seed of this tree another tree can be produced therefore the part is expressive of the whole for this seed was a part of the tree but therein potentially was the whole tree so each one of us may become expressive or representative of all the bounties of life to mankind this is the unity of the world of humanity this is the bestowal of god this is the felicity of the human world and this is the manifestation of the divine favor end of section 3 recording by abu jalal